Hello and welcome to our Active Countermeasures video where we're going to discuss detecting social media backdoors. Let's talk about why this is a problem to start with. There are a lot of organizations that allow their users to go to websites like Gmail. They allow their users to go to websites like Twitter or Tumblr or even websites like Salesforce. So whenever we're trying to detect those types of backdoors with traditional sign signature-based detection mechanisms, it kind of falls apart part fairly quickly and makes it very, very difficult to detect those backdoors in most organizations today. So what we want to do is we want to show you what these backdoors look like whenever you're using Active Countermeasures AI Hunter. So let me close this out, open this up. So as all of our videos start, we start at this opening screen. We're getting ready to do a hunt and we're going to try to detect some social media backdoors. And the one that I want to show you is one called Gmail's uh, backdoor called GCAT that was originally written by Black Hills Information Security and was taken over by Byte Bleeder. So if I go over here, select the little gears, and in the right hand side over here, the gear opens up this awesome little data set. Now, when your data set's open, it's going to be sorted by date. Once again, Bro is going to run, Rita is going to ingest and analyze those data sets at night. Takes a little while. Next morning, you come up, you have your data sets. Now, we've named our data sets with very descriptive names because it's easy for me to find the one that I'm looking for. So, GCAP. So I close that out and we're going to open up beacons. Now, the beaconing analysis has a number of different interesting beacon systems that show up, uh, and there's other videos that I'm working on. But I want to show you specifically um, this particular backdoor. You see that this system right here that has the implant or the backdoor installed on it goes to goes from 105, or it actually is the full IP address, is 10.234.234.105, and it's connecting out to Google which is what we would expect to see. We would expect that Google would have a lot of traffic because that's what the backdoor is using. And a lot of organizations don't block the traffic or even analyze any traffic going to and from Google. Now, if we look, our actual frequency down here isn't the strongest frequency, right? I mean, if you look, we have a connection here at 1124, another one at 1424. So it doesn't have the strongest beacon. That doesn't. That's why it doesn't show up in the top. But it does have a large amount of connections at specific interval breakdowns. And if I flip it around and I look at the data size, the data size is incredibly consistent. And this is what becomes a dead giveaway for a lot of uh, uh, beacons that use social media. They may randomize their interval, but their data sizes are very, very consistent. And the reason why is it's going to the site like Google Mail or Tumblr or Salesforce. And it's checking, is there a command? Is there a command? Is there a command? And every time it asks that question, it comes up with the exact exact same data size. So over here, we have over 500 connections. And down here, we have just a, a very connection, a very strong connection bar graph showing us it's about, I don't know, 1500 bytes that almost all of those 500 connections have a very, very strong beacon on data size. Now, the reason why I did this video is really a number of reasons. One, you can't always relay to interval. You can't always just look at interval and expect a beacon to be perfect because there are backdoors that introduce jitter. You also can't look at it just a strict internal IP address to external IP address because sites like Google do load balancing. This is all part of the exact same GCAT backdoor, but our internal system is connecting again and again to Google, but to different IP addresses. So traditional sort of just detection with interval is hard, but whenever we start looking at the data size, the data size is what is consistent across all of these different backdoors with Google communicating to our internal computer system, we see a very strong connection count with the exact same data size every single time. So with AI Hunter, we just simply flip the view from interval, flip it over to data size, and all of a sudden a backdoor like GCAT is much, much easier to identify. I hope you liked this video, and I hope to see you in the next videos.